So this is going to be a short video in which we're going to discuss the Archimedean property of the real line. So the Archimedean property is the name given to the fact that the natural numbers within the real line are not bounded above. That is to say that there is no real number that might magically come about from the axioms of the real line that is suddenly bigger than every single one of the counting numbers, the natural numbers. What we will actually do to prove that is show that the completeness axiom of the real line cannot possibly be consistent with such a scenario. So if there were a real number that was bigger than all the natural numbers, it would be inconsistent with the completeness axiom of the real line. That's what we'll show in this video. So just a quick picture. So here's the real line, and then the natural numbers start with zero and then go on one, two, three, four, and they go on forever and ever and ever. So we might extend our real line out, so to the general natural number n, but it doesn't stop there. It goes on with n plus one, etc., etc. And the Archimedean property is that there is no real number all the way out here, some magic real number x. It doesn't exist, so this is nonsense. Um, there is no number that is bigger than every single one of them. So x is greater than or equal to, we could say, uh, n for all n is an element of the natural numbers. Because if that x existed, it would be an upper bound for this set of natural numbers within the real line. And that's what the Archimedean property is. It's the fancy name for the fact that this doesn't exist. The natural numbers are not bounded above in the real line. So hopefully it's fairly intuitive to you that this is true. Let's think now about how we can actually prove it, though. And to do that, let's firstly consider a simpler case. So we we're thinking up here about the real line, but let's now go to a simpler ordered field. Let's go to the rationals. And the Archimedean property is going to hold true in the rationals as well. If we consider the natural numbers sitting inside the rationals, here they are, then again, they're not bounded above in the rationals either. Of course, the rationals are a subset of the reals. So if they were bounded above in the rationals, they'd then be bounded above in the reals. But let's think about how we would prove that there cannot possibly be some x over here that is bigger than or equal to every single one of the natural numbers. So if this is an element of the rationals, and what you should think about this x being is it's kind of really, it's kind of this plus infinity symbol is what we know informally is what this is referring to. And of course, this isn't in the reals. It isn't in the rationals. Um, so that's really what we're showing that no, nothing that's actually in these satisfies this property of this plus infinity symbol. So if it is in the rationals, so if there was some x that was in the rationals that was bigger than or equal to all the natural numbers, well, because it's in the rationals, it's going to be of the form a over b, where a and b are both, let me just rub that out, I didn't mean that comma there, are both elements of the integers. And because it's going to clearly be a positive element, because it's bigger than every single one of the natural numbers, which are themselves greater than zero, so by transitivity, it's going to be positive. So we can conclude that both of these are going to be positive as well. So, uh, of course, really, the rationals are those equivalence classes of all of the possible fractions that are all equivalent, but we'll be able to pick a representative that has both of them greater than zero. So we'll just do that for simplicity. So A and B, we can assume, are both e greater than zero. Now, there's two cases. One case is that B is equal to 1, in which case X is actually just equal to some positive rational, uh, which would be A, but... Uh, some positive integer, rather. Uh, and, of course, the positive integers are natural numbers. So, in that case, this thing that's supposedly the 
upper bound for the whole set of natural numbers is itself a natural number. But that's nonsense, because then you can consider x plus 1, which will also be a natural number, and it will be bigger than the one that's supposed to be bigger than or equal to every natural number, so it would contradict it. So that case we've proven nonsense. Let's now consider the case where b is not equal to 1. So that means that b is going to be greater than 1. And if b is greater than 1, then 1 over b is going to be less than 1. So the multiplicative inverse of a number that's greater than 1 will be less than 1. So that follows from basic ordered field properties of the rational numbers. So now what we can do is run with this inequality. We can multiply top and bottom by a, which is a positive uh, integer. So the inequality sign isn't going to flip, so we'll just get a over b is less than a. So we've now shown that this thing here is going to be strictly less than some a, where a is some positive integer, some natural number. So here is a natural number that's bigger than this thing that's supposed to be bigger than or equal to all the natural numbers. So it's nonsense, basically, all nonsense. There is no rational number that is bigger than or equal to all the natural numbers, and here's the simple argument to show it's nonsense. Now, it's still going to be nonsense when we go to the bigger field of real numbers. However, here, if we try and think about how we can prove that the existence of this is nonsense, it's more difficult because we can't simply characterize what x is going to be in the same way. We can't, we don't understand the structure of our numbers in the real line as well as we do in the rationals. They're much simpler. The structure of the numbers is much simpler in the rationals. So it's more difficult. We can't use this avenue of proof. However, there's still a really simple, beautiful way of disproving this element. And the way you do it is by showing that if it existed, it would be inconsistent with the completeness axiom of the real line, and therefore it's gone. <laughs> the completeness axiom we love and adore, if it, anything is inconsistent with that, then it's gone, gone forever. So here's the argument, and it's really simple. So proof by contradiction. So we assume it exists, so undo that cross there. We're assuming it now exists, and it satisfies this property here. It's an upper bound for the whole of the natural numbers. So by the completeness axiom, or the least upper bound axiom, whatever you want to call it, any bounded, or any set that is bounded above, has a least upper bound. So this set of natural numbers therefore must have a least upper bound if it's got an upper bound. So we can now call that least upper bound S. Now S might be the same as X. X might have been the least upper bound, but in general it might not have been. So we've now got this least upper bound S. But this is nonsense, and I'll show you why. Because we can now consider S minus 1. So this number here, and s minus 1 now cannot be an upper bound for the natural numbers, because if it was, then it would contradict s being the least upper bound. So remember that's the property of being a least upper bound, that you are 1, an upper bound, and 2, if anything else is an upper bound, it has to be greater than or equal to you, it cannot be less than you. Now s minus 1 is clearly less than s, so it cannot be an upper bound, otherwise it would contradict s being the least upper bound. Now that means that there must exist some natural number, which we can call um, n, uh, that is strictly greater than s minus 1. So n must be greater than s minus 1. Because otherwise, if there was no natural number that was strictly greater than s minus 1, um, it would be an upper bound of the natural numbers. So this must exist, and I've, it's going to be in between there because we're assuming it can't be greater than s because if it was greater than s, that would contradict s being an upper bound, and we're saying s is a least upper bound, so it is an upper bound. So it must be somewhere in here. But now what you can do is you can just add 1 onto both sides of that inequality. So m plus 1 
is greater than s. So you can take this natural number and just add 1 onto it, and it will now be above s. And there's the proof in terms of um, manipulating the inequalities in the way we know holds true for ordered fields. So we now have this natural number m plus 1 that is greater than s, but that contradicts s being an upper bound. So we've arrived at absolute nonsense. So this x couldn't have existed. Um, otherwise, it would be inconsistent with the least upper bound axiom or the completeness axiom. So there you go. That's the Archimedean property of the real line. And we do use this quite a lot in real analysis. The way we use it is often we have some number x and we want to conclude that we can always find a natural number that's bigger than x. Uh, and that, again, should be intuitively obvious to you. But the way that you prove that is with this Archimedean property, because if you couldn't find a natural number that was bigger than x, then x would be an upper bound for the natural numbers, and the Archimedean property says that does not exist within the real line. So that's the way we often use it in real analysis, and we do make use of it very reasonably frequently, hence why I've felt it was necessary to make a video on it early in this playlist. Thank you for watching.